So this is part one on how to solve a crease pattern. I have been asked a lot to do this video, so I'm going to take my time and try and talk you through how to collapse this crease pattern. So this crease pattern is a basic scorpion that was given to me by my friend RV on Instagram. So make sure to give him a follow, the link's in the description to his profile. So he made this video possible, so please give him a follow, it does mean a lot. Right, so for this crease pattern, it's straightforward. Um, I've drew all the creases that you need to make, so again the crease pattern is in the description. If you can, download it, print it off, or take a picture of it, whatever's easiest. So I've prefaced it, I've drew all the lines, so I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first thing is, for crease patterns, the general rule of thumb is 90% of the time for every crease pattern, or near enough every crease pattern, is colour side up and the first crease in is a mountain fold. So let me just give you an example. So we're just going to, I'm just going to write C here. So that's the colour side. And then of course the other side is white. So the colour side up and then the first crease in, which is this one, that's the mountain fold, so you would do that. And then it would be valley, mountain, valley, and the same for all of it. So that's the general rule of thumb. But when you get any more complex crease patterns, things can change slightly. If there's colour changes, if the legs are colour changed, even though the body's brown, but the legs are green, and then there would be valley folds. But we can get into that and at a later stage. So we're only going to focus on this simple scorpion for the for the uh, for this video. So that's this is a one of the crease patterns. And um, so we only have the lines. So this is how that is shown. So if you check the crease pattern in the description, you can see that we've only got we've got the grids and we've got the lines, but we don't have all these extra lines that you would normally have in a crease pattern. So that is one variation of it. Uh, we have a few more variations, and uh, let me just quickly show you. So again, the crease pattern in this one is just single coloured. Uh, we also have a bit more complex, but again, it's all single coloured. And this crease pattern uh, for Camille's Lobster doesn't have a grid underneath. So this is an example of single coloured, no grid crease pattern. So they're harder to do than general colour ones. And we also have a coloured crease pattern, mountain and valley, red is mountain, blue is valley, that's with the colour side up. And we also don't have the grid underneath to help pre-crease, but we do have the coloured lines and it only shows you the lines that you actually need to make. So it does help a lot when you have the red and blues or whatever two colour it is. So they are much easier than no colours. And then we also have much more complex. This is the house made. Uh, we do have general rough colours. We have like a light, a light black and black. Just say that. Uh, we don't have the grid underneath, but we do have the some rough colours to help collapse it. So that is harder than the those two, so in difficulty order, but there's one more, and oh, also have triangle grids, where you make triangles instead of squares, which this one is, and then these can contain a lot of weird angled curved creases, but again that's a later video, don't need to worry about that. And there's also circle pact, and we also have circle packed where these crease patterns here all use grids so these are all box pleated crease patterns where you make the grid you need for each crease pattern so this is a 76 grid so you make a 76 this would be a 44 so you make 44 I'm not sure I can't remember what that is 
and then for triangles you just make a triangle grid big, uh, big enough to make the creases. But for this crease pattern, circle, pa uh, circle packed crease patterns don't use grids. They're more of 22.5 degree creases. So if you look, this crease is right here. This is 90 degrees. So if I take this crease and this crease fold it over, that gives me 45 degrees. And then if I take this crease to here, 22.5. So that's what most crease patterns of that consist of. But again, these crease patterns can branch out in all directions and they do change a lot. So this is the general structure of a crease pattern, a circle packed crease pattern. And then we also have the awkward ones that you can't really make without doing certain techniques. So I made this, I pre-creased this, I've not collapsed it, I pre-creased it by ghost creasing. So there's, this is really the only way you can pre-crease crease patterns like this, unless you know another way. Unless you measure mark each crease, but that would take forever. So that's the rough crease pattern. So I'm going to look at how it collapse this crease pattern. So first of all, colour sides up, and the first crease in is a mountain fold. So I'm just going to draw. Bring this camera down. So the first crease in will always be a mountain fold, 9 out of 10 times it will be. Again when you are more experienced and you can rely on experience you can tell right away if it is a mountain fold or not but we're going to go with mountain fold. So um, what am I going to do? I'm just going to, I'm just going to control it. And I'll just write M for mountain, and then I'll do the same in the next one, but this will be a valley fold. So, valley. And then again, if you hold the crease pattern, so this point is at the bottom, and then there at the top. So, colour side up. So, I'll show the straight of that. Colour side up. Well, probably getting me that my handwriting is terrible. And then mountain and valley. So when you make the crease like this, and again the good thing about this crease pattern is the diagonals are all 45 degree. So there's no awkward uh, pre-creasing to be made, and it's pretty straightforward to collapse because most of the time. Most of the time, harder crease patterns contain different angled creases. So you can see here, we've got two squares. Nine out of ten times, the diagonal go from corner to corner. Like we have in this crease pattern, so all the creases are corner to corner. But when you get in the harder ones, they can be from corner, so two squares here. So it can be from here across two and up one, so it would be going through two, or it would be going through three, so you'd go across three and up one, so you'd have a one by three crease. But that's later on, that's more harder ones, so we don't need to worry about that, this is straightforward. Right, so I might have keep those in. So when you make the mountain fold, what are you supposed to do when you hit the diagonal? Do you just go all the way down and then make the next one? But how would that work? So if I were to make this mountain fold here and try and collapse that, that's not going to work. No way in hell is that going to work. So whenever a crease hits a diagonal, it changes direction. In general, 45 degrees. So this crease, let me just draw an arrow. So this crease is coming down this direction. So it's coming down this direction. 
so the crease when it hits the diagonal it changes direction so it comes down and it can't go this way because if I make that and then make that mountain fold that wouldn't really work and again there's no crease here for it to actually go so if there's no crease in that direction don't make it so we have a crease here so it can't come down this way can't go across that way so it must go up this way so it comes down hits here then goes up this direction so I'll just colour this in So again, this is the mountain fold. So it comes down, hits here, changes direction. And this applies to all these patterns. Again, when you get more complex, things can vary, but this is the this is what happens in every crease pattern. Every single one, no matter how difficult or easy it is, this is what you do. So it comes down, hits here. And then the same with the valley fold, I'm going to just draw this in. <laughs> Lines up with the V. And then it comes down, hits this point, and it can't go this way. If we try and make it go this way, we'll, we'll find out what happens. So this should be valley fold. So if it comes down here, then I'm going to need to try and squash it like that. So again, it's not working, and if you don't have the actual crease for it to fit in, it won't work. So again, if there's no crease, don't make it. So this comes down, and then changes this direction. I can't go straight down, because look, if we have this one in place, this one, if that were to stay valley fold, that would come down like that. How are we supposed to make this mountain fold? So what would we, would we do that? But if we do that, we're making extra creases that aren't in the crease pattern, which is wrong. We shouldn't be doing that. So the creases always follow where they've been made, and the diagonals always help them go in that direction. So let me just colour this in. That's how it comes down, hits here, and then goes to the right. So we make the mountain fold, and then we make the valley fold. And there you go, that is correct. We're using the diagonals that have already been made, that are in the crease pattern that should be used, and it collapses straight forward. And this applies to this side as well. So we're going to focus on this side. So when the hit, when the crease pattern, the, when the line hits here, same thing happens. The crease doesn't go straight forward, doesn't come down because it can't come down. So we try and make it come down. We've got the mountain fold in place. We have the valley fold in place. If the crease were to come down, again we're making it really awkward for ourselves. It's not going to collapse. We're going to end up making new creases, which we shouldn't be. So the crease is either going right or left, up, down. <laughs> it will go straight up. So we're going to colour that in. Again, this is the mountain fold. So as you can see, it hits here, bounces to the right, hits that diagonal, bounces straight up, and then it hits 
this diagonal. And then the same thing happens. I'm going to zoom in for you. When it hits here, it will change direction. So when we make the mountain fold, we need to use this crease. So it then comes up, bounces, and then we'll come back down. So there you can there we're using the creases that are actually in the crease pattern that should be used. We're not making any extra ones. So I won't colour in this side, I'll keep it all the same basically. So let me just quickly show you what happens again. So when it comes down, I'll come all the way down until it hits. Here, right where this one hits. And then I'll repeat the process on this side. So I'll come across, hit here, and then go up, and then so on. So that is what happens to the crease. It's the exact same on both sides. And then we're going to look at the next one. So we've got the mountain got the valley. Draw it in. Mountain. So I've got the mountain fold. Valley. Mountain. Mountain fold. Valley. Mountain. And then if we squash that together, we've got this bit collapsed. And we're using the creases on the crease pattern, we're not making any extra. So let me just draw this pattern and then I'll show you what happens up here. So when the crease pattern, no. So what these parts is is basically making pleats on the model. So this part will fold. When you do collapse it, I'll work with this one, it will fold over and meet this point. And then, no, this method of making pleats is the exact same for near enough every model that has pleats like this. Again, they're just maybe more complex, there may be more things you need to do, they might not have straight lines up and down, there might be something happening here, but this will still do the same work as it should and will give you the same result, even though there may be, there might be things that, there might be more things that are going on in the crease pattern rather than straight lines. So. When it hits here, can the mountain fold go just one direction or does it go on the left or the right or does it go in both? The answer is it goes in both directions. So it goes up. to draw this pattern. So the crease also goes here. So I'm going to show you. So I'm going to collapse this part again. And then collapse this part. What I mean by this is, this is the mountain fold, and then the valley, remember valley, mountain, valley, so this will be the valley. So we need to bring this down, that's the thing with crease patterns like this. For example, it doesn't show you all the lines. Um, Let 
like for here for example, this is what I should show you, these extra lines here. What do these tell me? These tell you what direction the paper gets pushed in. So for here, we have the mountain fold on the outside, then valley, mountain valley, and so on. So this top point is the mountain fold. So when you collapse all these mountain folds, let me just show you as an, uh, an example here. So when you collapse all the mountain, the mountain valley, mountain valley, and then you have the mountain here, what will happen is it will end up getting pushed out like this. So that pushes the paper out and this part would get pushed in. So for here it would be valley on the outside and the mountain on the inside. So what it doesn't tell you on this crease pattern, what you might need to look out for is extra lines here. So it should be telling you these creases. So two important creases that we need to look at. I'll just draw these two. So if, if, if I were to show you this, it would be easier. So what these creases, I'll draw over here as well. So this is what I mean by this crease gets folded over to this point and in order to do that we need you need to make the mountain fold first and then we'll just collapse this point so we have this and then this would be the valley fold so that would get pushed down and then this would be the mountain fold, so that would get pushed up. So what that does is it creates a pleat. It creates an extra flap, basically. So from this, so when it gets folded up, it meets here and then gets tucked around, but we've not done it right on this side, so this is what it should look like. And crease pattern, if they do have these, they can have as much or as less. So this one is in the centre. So these uh, plates are in the centre of the crease pattern. So even if they were in the bottom left hand corner, you would do the exact same process, what you do here, for these. Even though they're in the bottom left hand corner, the exact same thing you would do even if they were more difficult but it was still in the bottom left hand corner the exact same thing what you do here, the exact same so it doesn't matter where they are on the crease pattern it's the exact same process so again, push it down and then you collapse so I've just got the example this is, the, this is a bit more complex, this is from Camilla's Lobster. I had to do this to help me try and figure out the colours. So I think it's right here somewhere. Yep, I fix it right here. But exact same thing. And then you create the pleat. Right, so we're going to collapse this and then do the same on this side because it's always best to keep the model symmetrical in fact not yet, I'll do this last one first so I've got that, so this would be the mountain fold so there's no direction this is going so it's, no, that would be the valley fold this would be the mountain fold and then because they, these get flipped Because this gets pushed inside, the creases invert, so mountain fold up to here. Let's do a X. And that changes the valley fold. And then same here, the valley fold changes to mountain fold. And then this will be valley fold. 
and to show you that, so if we make it again, this is the valley fold which is pushed down, this crease here is the mountain fold which it is, and then this final one is the valley fold which they are all correct, so they will all, all fall into place, like so. And we're going to look at this last crease, so mountain valley, mountain valley. Valley Mountain, and then we make this last valley fold, and then the mountain fold is the centre one, which we need to draw on. Forgot about that. Again, the same thing. We have two points. These will both be mountain folds just like these two. So how that looks is like so. That's what that looks like. This is what I was talking about. See right here, the paper's getting pushed inside, and this is the valley fold. So let me just draw this. So when the crease pattern tells you all all these creases and lines and extra bits, that helps so much. So because that outside one's a valley fold, this is a valley fold mountain. Valley, mountain, and valley. So the crease pattern should tell you this and these creases. So if we make these again, you can see that. gets pushed inside like it should just in that way so the valley fold mountain valley mountain valley and they are all being used correctly as the crease pattern should be and then it collapses nice and neatly you shouldn't need to force anything in place maybe when you get more complex ones you will need to but in this case, we don't need to, this is just a simple one to start with. So that's how to collapse that part. So there is quite a lot happening, but the more you do crease patterns, the easier it gets. It's just all about experience, even if you watch this whole video and do it all bit by bit as I do it, you won't be a master of it, you need to keep attempting crease patterns in order to get better. I can't show you everything in one video or more videos and then you'll be the best at them. It's just learning how to do each manoeuvre and practice it. That's the best advice anyone can give you on crease pattern is practice a lot. And don't worry if you fail. There's no shame in failing. I've failed a lot but I've practiced a lot and I'm happy where I'm at. I'm able to make a lot of models that I couldn't make before. So, do the same thing on this side. So now that once we've got this first one collapsed, we need to do the exact same on this side. But before I do that, I'm just going to quickly draw in this valley fold. 
So when the valley fold hits here, where does it go? Does it go straight up? Does it go to the right? Or does it go to the left? So we've already got this valley fold in place. I can't really draw that in. So as you can see, this line is already a valley fold after you collapse it. So the valley fold continues to extend itself all the way down to the bottom. It keeps going until it hits another diagonal. Sometimes on crease pattern, if there's no diagonal, it will just keep going until the end of the paper. So it would all be valley fold if there was no diagonals here. It would just keep going until nothing hits nothing. So we make these creases, we've got that, we have this, keep forgetting which bit has to zoom in and out, and the valley fold keeps going down. So I'm not going to draw on the rest, we're going to do the exact same on this side to keep it symmetrical, because every time, this is a good tip that I do, every time you do something on one side, do it on the other, just in case you forget, because if you do all this and then continue down and then by the time it comes to this side you may have forgot what to do, you may have forgot the easiest way to do it or you're so worked up on doing all this that because it's all 3D and collapsed it, may make, it might make it more difficult to collapse this side. So again, do what you can on one side, the exact same on the other. So I've collapsed this side like you should, but what I've also done on the other side is I've coloured it in to show you exactly what's happening. So when you look at a crease pattern, this is what you should be imagining on the crease pattern to see what's happening. So again, it's much easier when you see the crease pattern like this because it tells you exactly what to do. So we'll make the mountain fold, valley. Then the mountain, and then the valley. I'll just quickly collapse this side to show you. You see, that happens like that. So the valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley. They're all correct. They're all correct. So let's put this mountain fold in place. So we need to open it back out make this valley fold then this goes all the way down until it hits the diagonal which is here and then this gets pushed down this point gets pushed up therefore creating a pleat and then to get to properly collapse these parts, you see how the paper is, 90 degrees, the paper has to, now I'm trying to do it a wee bit, just so I can show you easier, the paper has to go in that direction, you, you, you cannot collapse these parts neatly if it's flat down, see what happens, it's messy, the paper has to come 90 degrees, direction then you can collapse it nice and neatly and there you have collapsed your first plate so these plates are used in you know, every model that has them and it's the exact same process I've just got some examples here let me just go back down so we have Robert Lang's Mosquito. Exact same, this has quite a few more, not probably about the same amount. It's the exact same process as you do here, but this crease pattern has more happening in the middle, so you may need to change it about. But these plates and these plates, easy, complex, the exact same process. And we also have just 
So we have Robert Lang's Wasp, that I probably should paint yellow. Again, they have pleats on the abdomen, exact same process. They may be slightly different, more angled, awkward creases, but they do the exact same job as these. These are the basic, simple ones. These are probably, I can't, I can't remember how they work on the inside, but they're the exact same process. And again, Robert Lang's Mosquito. The pleats, the exact same process as these ones. They are those ones. And Robert Lang's tarantula. This is from the triangle grid, but they create the exact same effect, but just a different way of actually doing them. So these are triangle made, these are square made. We can cover this in a future video. But all of these pleats on the body are the exact same process. There's nothing extra or tricky to doing them, it's just understanding the basic one which we're doing and once you master this by doing it lots of times you'll realise that everything is the same, it's nothing difficult, it's just they may be more tricky to actually do but they give you the exact same result in just a different format. So that's basically what pleats are doing and how to do them. Right, so I've done this. So I'll so mount and fold. So when it hits here, the exact, uh, the exact same here, it comes up. And then it hits here, mountain, mountain, the exact same to what we have here. So, yeah, I'll need to draw in. I'll draw on this side, I'll colour on this side to show you the difference. So again, this mountain fold, even though it hits this point, it doesn't change direction, you're hitting the top of a crease, so it still continues to go all the way down until it hits a diagonal or it goes to the end of the paper. exact same process here but these have been flipped so as you've seen we had the mountain fold on the first one now it's the mountain fold on this one no, I mean the valley fold on the inside of the first plate now it's the mountain fold on the inside of the second plate so it goes back and forth so it'll be a valley mountain valley mountain valley mountain valley and so on so if we make these pieces all the way down, that's better. 
And then we make these pieces again. Now, I've got something like this. And it's the exact same as this point, but every time we go down a pleat, the layers get bigger, so we have an extra layer to compensate with. So as you can see, we've only got this one. So one layer that goes into the valley folds. So now we have two layers that go into the valley fold. So that's one and two. And then it'll be three, four, five and six and so on for however many of these there are. So again the mountain fold comes up, goes that way and that way to meet up with this one. And then we need to remember, yep we've already got these drew in. So these creases help as well if they're coloured. So we make the first one, this is the valley, and then this is the mountain. So I need to collapse this side to make it easier. So now we've got it collapsed on this side. Again we're keeping it symmetrical, not like this. It has to be 90 degrees. Uh, try and hold it together and then we push down the first one. Remember, valley fold. Same here, valley fold mountain. So it comes down one, one, two, and one. So there's two extra to one. And then the valley, and then the mountain. So this one is thicker than this one. And that's how you do the second one. So again, every time you do it on one side, collapse it neatly on the other. Just so you can keep symmetrical. So I'm going to unfold it and draw in all the colours on this side. So now you should have this. So we've collapsed the first two pleats, near enough the third one. Now if we unfold it slightly, you can see that the first one you have the mountain fold, the second one you have the valley folds, the third one is back to the mountain, so it's the exact same as this. The fourth one will be the valley fold. So it's the same as the third, so basically it's mountain fold, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain. So it's the same process. So I want you to do the exact same for this one. If you've not already done this one, so the third one and the fourth one and the fifth. So I've done first one. So what we're going to do is finish off the third one, the fourth and the fifth. I'm not going to talk through it, I want you to rely on the experience that, of what you've learned for the first two and use it to complete the next two and finish off this third one. Right. So I'm going to do it but I won't talk so just, you can, you can either watch me do it or you can pause the video and try it for yourself. So if you want to pause it right now then try it for yourself. So the next three up to here. Right, I won't talk anymore.
Right, so that's those three collapsed. You should have something like this. So I'm quickly going to colour in this side and then I'll let you do the last two. So I've coloured in all the right side on the creases we've used and this is what we've ended up with. So when the crease pattern shows you these creases it makes it much more easier because it tells you what direction the creases go. For instance, that's where I've drawn the arrows just to, earlier on. It tells you what direction the creases grow. The, Go, not grow. Right, so we're going to recollapse everything and then continue the last part. So the last part, so we've already got the last one in place, I think I did one too much but you should have this anyway. And again I'm not going to talk doing this part, I want you to rely on, on what you've learned on the previous ones and just take your time and try and collapse this last one in place. So again, pause the video right now if you want to do that or you can follow along. So, there we go, that is all the pleats collapsed, nice and neatly and correctly, so you should have this for the bottom part. And if you manage to do this on your own, if you pause the video then congratulations. Right, so we don't have a lot more to do on this model. So we've collapsed the majority, the hardest part of the crease pattern, which is the pleats. So they're out of the road. So now if we open up, we can see that these mountain folds went all the, the mountain and valley went all the way down. So again, we can fold this part inside. That's straightforward and do the same here. And then remember when we started the crease comes up, hits the diagonal and then folds over, no, comes over this way, so box pleating. So that's when you have layers like this. You can box pleat it. So you open up, again it's the exact same as here. If you were to extend all these creases all the way down, and then box pleat it, you'll end up with this result. So it's doing the same thing on these legs, just up here. So again, the first crease is the mountain fold. So we push that in place. The next one is the valley. 
and the final one as the mountain fold. And then we tuck that part inside. I think these creases are, I think they forgot to add creases here because you can't make these without making extra ones. So when you've got it inside, just fold it like so. And then that is that, you have fully collapsed this crease part and just put it down on the table and flatten it all. So that's the scorpion collapsed. And you can see we have the body with the scales that you can curve and do whatever shape you want with it. You have the majority of the body that has no scales. You have one leg, two leg, three, and four legs. So four here, four there, and then you have the front claws. So I'm going to unfold it, colour in the creases on this side and add the extra ones here. Because we made some, we made a square here and then half a square here to finish it off. So I'm going to do that. So this is all the right side coloured in. So this is what you should try to visualise when you look at a crease pattern. Because if they don't show you these creases, or these ones, or these ones, that can make it difficult, so no, I can make it more difficult, so you need to try it. Imagine that these lines are shown, or even draw them in, that does help so much. So if you manage to make this, congratulations, and well done. Um, if you could, show me your finished result, even if you shape the model as well, or just show me the, the base of the model, either to my Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, any of those. I use them all the time. I'm mostly active on Instagram, so that would be the quickest way to get in touch with me and show me. So if you could do that, that would be amazing. And thank you so much for watching. If you have not already, make sure to like and subscribe. See you all in part two.